Mr. Greedy loved to eat. And the more he ate, the fatter he became. And the trouble was, the fatter he became, the more hungry he became. And the more hungry he became, the more he ate. And the more he ate, the fatter he became, and so it went on. Mr. Greedy lived in a roly-poly sort of a house. One morning, Mr. Greedy awoke rather earlier than usual. He'd been dreaming about food, as usual, and that had made him wake up feeling hungry, as usual. So Mr. Greedy got up, went downstairs, and ate the most enormous breakfast. This is what Mr. Greedy had for his breakfast. Toast, two slices, cornflakes, one packet, milk, one bottle, sugar, one bowlful, toast, three slices, eggs, three boiled, toast, four slices, butter, one dish, marmalade, one pot. That was a delicious breakfast, he thought to himself. Now, I wonder what would be nice to have for lunch. He decided in order to work up an appetite for lunch, he would go for a long walk. That morning, Mr. Greedy walked and walked and walked. Then he discovered a cave. That's funny, he thought. I don't remember seeing that there before. Mr. Greedy, being a curious sort of fellow, decided to explore. He entered the dark cave. Inside, he discovered some giant steps leading upwards. Mr. Greedy, being a curious sort of fellow, decided to climb them. They were very steep and very difficult to climb. At the top of the steps, Mr. Greedy came to a door. It was, without doubt, the biggest door that Mr. Greedy had ever seen. And it wasn't quite shut. Mr. Greedy squeezed himself through the crack in the door, and there, before him, was an amazing sight. The biggest room in the world. The floor was as big as a field. The table in the middle of the floor was as big as a house. And the chairs around it were as high as trees. Mr. Greedy felt very small. Then he sniffed. Coming from somewhere on top of that gigantic table was the most delicious foody smell that Mr. Greedy had ever smelled. Mr. Greedy sniffed again and then decided that he must get onto that table, so he began to climb up the leg of the enormous chair. It was very difficult and it took him a long time, but eventually Mr. Greedy stood on the table. Everything was larger than life. The salt and pepper pots were both as big as pillar boxes. There was a bowl of fruit on the table, and Mr. Greedy tried to lift one of the oranges. And Mr. Greedy, being Mr. Greedy, took a bite out of one of the apples there. Then he looked around. Over on the other side of the table stood the source of that delicious smell. A huge, enormous, gigantic, colossal plate. And on the plate, Huge, enormous, gigantic, colossal sausages, the size of pillows. And huge, enormous, gigantic, colossal potatoes, the size of beach balls. And huge, enormous, gigantic, colossal peas, the size of cabbages. Mr. Greedy began to eat. Suddenly, a shadow fell across the plate. And Mr. Greedy found himself being picked up by a giant hand and looking into the eyes of a real, live giant. And who, thundered the giant, are you? Mr. Greedy was so frightened that he could only just manage to squeak his name. Mr. Greedy, he squeaked. The giant laughed a laugh as loud as thunder. <laughs> greedy by name and greedy by nature, he bellowed. Well, I think, Mr. Greedy, that you need to be taught a lesson. And what a lesson it was. The giant made Mr. Greedy eat up everything on that huge, enormous, gigantic, colossal plate. When he had finished, Mr. Greedy felt very ill indeed, as if he would burst at any minute. No, said the giant, in a much quieter voice. Do you promise never to be greedy again? <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, yes, moaned Mr. Greedy. I promise. Very well, said the giant. Then I'll let you go. Mr. Greedy climbed down from the table and went out through the door feeling very fat. And do you know something else as well? Mr. Greedy doesn't look like he used to anymore. He now looks thinner, which I think suits him a lot better, don't you? So if you know anybody who's as greedy as Mr. Greedy used to be, you know what to tell them, don't you? Beware of giants.